Hello guys, welcome to IB Professional School's official YouTube channel. In our past Python videos, we have seen uh, videos such as data cleaning or such as uh, missing value handling of data sets. So in this video, we will see scaling of data. So first of all, what is data scaling and why do we require data scaling? So let's take an example as we can see the data frame over here. We have three attributes income, birth year and department. So we will consider the first two attributes income and birth year. So as you can see the value in income is values that are in income are 15,000, 1,800, 1,20,000, 10,000 those values. And the birth year has values as 1998, 2005, 1981, 1972. So let's first take out the age from the birth year and that will explain this the usage of uh, data scaling more in better way. So the age from the birth year we can get our 25 for the first person because the birth year is 1998 then the second 2005 so the uh, age currently will be 18 and so on will be the age so now if we try to apply any ml model on the data which has such a format so what will ml model see over here is age is such a low value which is as low as 25 as compared to the income value which is 15,000. so age cannot compete with the income uh, with a, such a big value because age cannot be such a huge value like an income whereas income value cannot come down to 25 or 18 something like that so what will happen over here if we apply any ml modeling in our uh, this data frame what will happen is income there is a possibility that income might influence the uh, output more than age and the ml model might prioritize the income attribute more than age just because of the huge values that income has but that is not uh, what the case is as we know income as a 15,000 for a person with a age 25 is a very normal value because income is not influencing more income has no special attribute or no special meaning over here but this is something that the ml model will not understand so this is the uh, this is the scene where we require scaling the data where we scale or uh, both these attributes to a uh, a specific range where the ml model understands that okay this value is huge but uh, the this influence the uh, the huge value will not influence the model so how we will do that so first of all what we need to see is we need to convert uh, this birth year to age so before that as we can see we are importing our packages as pandas numpy then date time and then we are creating this data frame with three attributes income birth year and department and let's see how our data frame looks like once it's get created. So this is our data frame with three attributes, four columns, uh, four rows, very small database, but uh, it is better to work with small database when understanding. And then we can apply uh, these theories to big databases also. And this birth year will not help us in our analysis a lot. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a new attribute known as age where we are going to uh, subtract subtract the birth year from the current year date dot today dot year will give us the uh, current year which is 2023 and minus the birth year will give us the age once we get the age attribute we are going to drop the birth year column because we do not want unnecessary columns in our data set so once we run this this is what our data frame looks like when we are going to drop the birth year and we are going to create a new attribute known as age so let's start with the scaling of data here in this video we will see three different types of scaling whereas in ml modeling or scaling the data there are a lot of scaling methods but here we will see top three scaling methods that are being used so the first one is min max scalar so as the name suggests here we are going to use the minimum value and the maximum value of the attribute to scale the data so first of all uh, the scaling does not consider the uh, categorical variables in its calculation because you cannot perform any calculation when dealing with categorical variable so what we are going to do is we are going to create a copy of our data frame where we are going to consider only the integer values such as income and age and we are not going to consider the department that we had as a categorical value so here we are creating a copy of our data frame df scaled 
and after that from sklearn all these scaling uh, techniques or all these scaling packages or functions are provided by the sklearn package so we are going to import the min max scalar from sklearn and we are going to apply it to a feature known as scalar after that we are going to apply this scalar package or min max scalar to our data frame that we have created as known as df scaled as the copy of our data frame we are going to apply it on our feature on our data frame so first of all what is min max scalar and what it will do so let's run this and see what output we get so the function is running and here we see that income and age values are a lot different than we already had income for first we had 15000 and the age for that will be 25 was 25 but as you can see the margin over here is not that huge as we had the margin as 15000 is to 25 so this looks like a pretty good uh, value for our ml model so what is happening over here let's understand that in this we can see the income is 5 for the second person exactly 10 for the third person and the first and the fourth person has uh, income somewhat 5.55 5.3 and such values similarly in age the second person has the exact 5 value the fourth person has exact 10 value and the rest of the age falls under this range so what is happening over here is this min max scalar is calculated using this formula you can see over here we have x minus x of mean divided by x of max minus x of mean so what will happen over here if we are not considering the original values of the age or the income rather we are converting it into a common type of value for all the attributes that we are going to work on so you can see the values are, do not differ from each other a lot anymore where we had 15,025 then we had 1800 as income for 18 age so those values differed with a huge margin but now the values are not drifting more but how why is it that our uh, minimum value is 5 and maximum value is 10 this is because this feature range that we have provided in our function which is again an optional value if we do not provide this feature range let's see what will happen over here so as you can see we have not provided any feature range so what is happening is the values fall under the range 0 to 1 all the values you will see is falling under the range 0 to 1 but this looks a little vague age as 0 or income as 0 for a person age cannot be 0 so this looks a little vague and this doesn't look good for the ml model so what we do is we provide a range this range can be anything if we shift this range from 50 to 100 it will still work very fine and it will give us the range something like this so this is the feature range and this is the easiest or uh, let's say the first uh, approach to scaling the data now let's move on to the second scaling method which is known as standard scalar so you must know about standard normal distribution of a data set this is the standard scalar which is based on that that theory only and the calculation we perform over here is x minus mean divided by the standard deviation the application is completely same as the min max scalar again we are going to create the same copy because in the previous copy we have already scaled the data so we are creating the same copy and this time the uh, data will be again fresh to scale now we are going to again import the standard scalar package from sklearn in the exactly same way and then we are going to apply it over here now you can see that if we run this function and we are going to run this and you can see the scaling of the data here we have negative values positive values which is a pretty obvious thing because the mean value will fall under all the uh, the in the median or in the middle of the values and once we subtract that value from a value less than we'll get a negative value and this looks uh, like a much better way of scaling our data set rather than min max scalar because that only gave us positive values and we could not uh, see the difference between a less value and a more value but again this scaling also helps us a lot in our uh, ml modeling because this reduces the margin or this reduces the chance of the model to prioritize any attribute over the another attribute so but the problem there is a hidden problem which lies uh, in these both of these scaling techniques is that these scaling techniques consider the 
a minimum value, the maximum value and the mean and standard deviation. And what is the issue with these values are these can be influenced when there are outliers or missing values or such anomalies in our data set. So if we have a big outlier, then the maximum value will be considered that and the data will change completely. If we have an outlier as a very low value or very high value, then the mean value and the standard deviation value will also be affected from such values. So we need a scaling method which is not influenced by outliers and this gave us the motivation for our third scaling technique which is robust scalar. So as the name suggests, it's robust to all the outliers and anomalies where we are not going to consider the minimum value or the maximum value or the mean. Okay, so uh, we are going to consider the quartile range for our data set. The quartile range which is Q1, Q3, Q1. So uh, Q1 is the first quartile, Q3 is the third quartile and because of this what happens over here is we are not considering the minimum value or the maximum value and when we consider the interquartile ranges, our outliers won't affect our uh, calculations much. So first we are going to create, here we are going to add another column because we were working on income and age for so long. So we are considering another column and known as balance and here we have different positive negative values where we have less value where we have a huge value and we can see that these outliers won't affect our data much. Again, we are going to create a copy of this data frame. We are going to add those features and then we are going to import the uh, robust scalar again from the SKLN package. So after importing, now what we need to do is we will again put this scalar in our theory and let's see how this affects our data set. So you can see here we have the values of the robust scalar which is the uh, best out of all the three scaling techniques that we have talked about. Here the values are 0.07 minus 0.32 and you can see that the effect of these value or the margin of these value is not huge. Whereas if you consider the margin when we had the original data such as 18,000 as salary, then we had 25 as age, again as you see balance we have added is 100. So the margin you can see is a huge margin over all these three values and if we are going to apply a ML model on values such like these, it will obviously be influenced by a value such as huge and it will not consider much a value such small as age. But we do not want to prioritize any attribute because all these attributes have different meaning to us. So there should not be any priority and for that uh, we are going for that reason we are considering to scale the data so that our ML model perfectly fits all our different data types, all our different types of attributes and does not prioritize any. So here we have seen three different types of scaling techniques in uh, when we are actually applying the scaling technique there are many scaling techniques that we can use such as clipping then we have quartile transform scalar then we have log transform such are also uh, very useful scaling techniques so in this video we have seen three different scaling techniques which are very much required before we put our data to use so hope you like this video for many such videos subscribe to ivy professionals official youtube channel thank you